<laughs> oh, this is so good! My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional biking kit tester for over 25 years. And today, it's my live ride review of the brand new Kotick Jet 2. 150mm fork, 140mm rear travel, 853 steel, Sheffield designed, semi-Scottish built, all-round Trailmaster. So, how does it ride? And with so many carbon and alloy bikes in this category, why would you want to buy a steel one? So it's a shortly sort of day and so I found a Kotick engineer behind all the decisions. He's riding with me today, so as he's on his e-bike, I figured I'd let him do the talking on the climbs. <laughs> he can fill you in what's changed on the new jet. I would like to say at this point I've got another two press rides to do this week, hence the e-bike. <laughs> whatever, sir. Whatever. 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 <laughs> um, so, Jet Gen 2. Um, it's subtle evolution rather than revolution this time. It's, uh, so we're just introducing the, the updates that we've brought to the rest of the drop link range over the last uh, couple of years. So it's C sizing now, so guys on a C3 uh, size now, whereas previously you would have been on a large. The bike's just a little bit shorter, a little bit steeper seat angle. And it's a more even sizing split between yeah. sizes, yeah? Yeah, so smaller smaller jumps between sizes. There's now size, uh, more size specific seat angles. Uh, so that's the C sizing side of things. Geometry wise, we haven't changed very much because it's, the Jet's like a real kind of Goldilocks bike for us. It's sort of, that not too much, not too little. And so travel is? 140 rear, 150 front. Yep. Uh, head angle's still 64 and a half. So your high tower, Jeffsy territory. Not sure why I mentioned the Jeffsy. <laughs> Don't know what might be happening yeah. to that tomorrow. So yeah, so, and it's become our, we, it's been out for three years now, but it's become our biggest selling drop link bike because it is that bike that fits into a lot of mountain bikers' lives. And Droplink is your proprietary suspension technology. <laughs> it is for my price. Sheffield bred, Alps yeah, so, honed. So it's still Droplink suspension, um, anti squat and anti rise are still the same because we haven't found anything we like better. The suspension rate. But is this bit... was kind of the bike when it came out that made those changes, really. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. This was your kind of Droplink evolution anyway, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. So this came out in November 2020, the first jet. Uh, so when the Rocket Max sort of went full enduro, we sort of slotted the jet into the middle of the range. Um, and like I say, it's our biggest selling drop link bike. So it's sort of proven by the, you know, the customer choice that, you know, it is the bike that a lot of mountain bikers want because you can still, it's still lively enough that you can sort of rip it through some single track and not feel like you're, you know, you're really wrestling the bike but it's sort of slack enough and the long shot geometry has sort of still got you back. You can go in play the in the park. Stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's that kind of sort of real, real nice kind of, well, I'd say that kind of sort of Goldilocks kind of bike. Um, I rode one of these in the Alps when we were at World Championships at Leger last year. And Where did you come? Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and, and yeah, I rode it in the park, rode it in the off piste and, and uh, yeah, I just had a, had, a, had a mint time and I normally ride a Rocket Max, but um, you know, it just worked to ride a Jet at that point. And it was, uh, yeah, it was great. So yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, so it works like that. Any um, structural changes? Um, I know on the Flare Max, you made some changes around the BB and yeah, the down tube. Again, same thing, because what we've done is we've, we've now on, because previously the Jet was mostly made in Taiwan apart from a couple of, special editions whereas this will be exclusively made in the UK so five land Scotland yeah five land so all of our drop link bike bikes will now be UK made 853 yeah custom psychotic oval form tubing that's the one yeah so it's got this it's got the HD down tube that we've introduced on the rest of the bike so stiffer more durable down tube it's got the little BB brace which we're set up for in the UK now which just makes the frames um you know sort of uh Again, more durable, longer life, um, yep. and uh, because I've been able to drop the BB a little bit, which uh, which should make it feel a bit more planted in in corners and just uh, a bit more sort of 
confidence inspiring. And then uh, the frame rate, the drop link suspension is broadly the same, but I've been able to introduce some more progression to the bigger sizes for a bit more support for larger riders and just uh, just improve the sort of sensitivity around the sag point. As well. So does the kinematic change for different rider sizes? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So the, well, the, just the, it's just the progression rate. The linkages and all of the pivots are in the same place. But okay. It's not, but the shock position changes slightly as the, okay. the bigger sizes, which can yeah. which can improve, which uh, can change the, the the amount of progression you get on the uh, on the shock. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, head yeah. angle, seat angle on this head angle C three, head angle sixty four and a half, uh, seat angle is oh well, how where do you want to measure it from? But seventy six and a half. Uh, Nominal. Nominally. <laughs> about, so 76 and a half about at your pedaling height. Yeah. So probably a bit steeper in the metrics that other people use. Yeah. Um, and then it's uh, half a degree slacker on the C1 and the C2, the smaller sizes, uh, just to make them fit a little bit better. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, all of the sizes apart from the Apart from the very smallest, have got slightly lower, lower down at top tubes and shorter seat tubes. Um, Twenty nine yeah. all the way through. Um, we can, st uh, yeah, that's the, that's the stock setting. But we can still do our mullet setup with the, the way we do on the other bikes by putting an angle set in to sort out the, uh, to sort out the um, head angle, uh, lift the BB up a little bit to make sure that works. So or just pop it in and slam and slack it. Well, you could do. That's a. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, size frowning now. That's a little bit less of a thing now. I've dropped the BB. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but no, you could slam and slack it definitely. But uh, but yeah, we yeah uh, we have got a we have got a mullet option. All the geometries on the table on the website, so you can go and have a flick through that and see what the differences are and see how you might may or may not prefer that. And you can geek out on the most comprehensive geek pages anywhere in the industry. I would say. <laughs> Yeah, well, so I love the story about tubing and geometry. Oh yes, once and as done since the original soul. Once a nerd, always a nerd. Yeah, well, it's done you well, hasn't it? <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> nerd to do well. <laughs> nerd do well, as yeah. they say up here in Yorkshire. <laughs> so here we go, Cotic Gen Two. It's one of my favourite tracks in the area. Yes. Oh, doing some work done in here, quite clearly. Yes. Oh, this is where that steel really carries smoothness through there because it actually feels pretty tight through the suspension. And I'll just pop out of there. Oh, I've so much pop, I need the camera. So, going back to the angles 64 and a half degree head at the end of a 483 mil reach on this C3. So good length and stability with way ah oh, I pop further through there than normal and that's still main free you can feel it as good as the suspension is even though it's a stiffer HD down tube bike now you can definitely feel on a osteo level it does feel like it's saving your bones a bit oh I really feel that back end just chattering that trail boss on the back there basically Max's forecaster made by WTB before the forecaster existed. Oh yeah, get that weight forward. You? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a flow fest, is this bike already? I'm a big fan of Jet One, but Jet Two can really take you places. Oh yes, first terrible pun of the day. <laughs> oh, I'd be singing Jess Glynn, but I think she got cancelled. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kirkman. You are spoiling us with these trail improvements. Yes! And to be fair, 
Zai's spoiling us with the bike improvements. Because like he says, yeah, this is evolutionary rather than revolutionary. But this is a beautiful little skimmer, floater, drifter. Oh, yes. Just feels, oh, that's new. Really neat. Really flowing down here. Oh, yes. Ha <laughs> Still sorted! <laughs> that was amazing! <laughs> boom, boom, boom! <laughs> what a trail! <laughs> what a trail bike, mate! It's good, isn't it? <laughs> it's good, that! It likes this! Oh. And, and it's the same colour. Not only is it Reynolds Steel, it's the same colour as the Rally Clubman fast touring bike I always wanted as a kid but it hasn't got champagne chroma plastic mud guard so obviously something I need to work on with the, the little cotic fender there it's got nice shiny silver hope stuff maybe, yeah a lot of that maybe Alan do you some that as champagne anno uh, <laughs> champagne anno hope bits to go on <laughs> <laughs> bit of campag be right Ooh. and like Si was saying this is their most popular bike in the kite range but it's also where you get so many of the massively yes send it jack capable do it all trail bikes now 40 oh pop through there with that progression so good now it's where you've got your high towers your spectrals your jeff C's, all those big headline flagship range defining bikes so yeah it's a big ask for Kotick to be in that space but they just add something so different and I'm not just talking about the material either this bike is actually I think it'll surprise a lot of people that ride it because it's so hench it's so I built whatever you want you say. But this bike is just an absolute inner, but still with that total charisma of a steel frame, that real flow, and beautiful speed creation, and that more braced bottom of the bike, and that lower bottom bracket just makes it feel so planted for returns now. The only major issue with all that is I just get keep getting carried away. We're meant to be stopping and uh, kind of sessioning this for photos with Darren and Si, but the flow, these trails, this bike, such a good match. Yeah, I mean, they're nice. They're nice brakes. It's got hell of big rotors, 203s on this. That's where a lot of the, you know, that's where some of the weight is, but I just don't want to pull them. I just want to go faster. I just want to go. Sorry, Darren. Sorry, Si. Let's push back up. I sod it. It's got a steep seat angle. I'll... So you're not just getting that steel vibe. <laughs> you think? You're getting a proper Scottish five land built front end now, rather than Taiwanese. All the alloy sections are built by Rideworks. So. It's only the alloy rear end that it's an offshore bike now. So not just designed, conceived up in Sheffield, but a real UK bike. And while you've got the firm lever on Super Deluxe, it's kind of just using it out of politeness really on the road climbs. Certainly off-road. Drop link pedals in a really stable way, but still got impressive sensitivity, certainly with this uh, Super Deluxe in there. So yeah, totally sorted. I mean, drop link's been going a while, but this bike feels superb. Under power or on the descents. So you have got that straight gauge down tube and the extra brace pipe now. Because I changed the side, well, it's plainly obvious. 
people's expectation of what a trail bike can handle. Oh God, it floats that nicely. Really pops that bit. I think I said identical on the next, on the last run through that section, but it's worth reiterating, especially as to what I'm going to say next. Because there is a slight weight penalty to run in a steel frame. Especially one that's now proper parked tough. But this bike comes in at 16 kilos. I mean, that's only what, 700 grams heavier than Merida's carbon framed 140 bike. And this is a build with, you know, Lyric and heavy duty Hope wheels on. Well, I mean, they're the SC. Meant to be the lighter ones, but it's still a sturdy wheel set. And you've got 203 mil rotors, got big old spiky verdict tyre on the front as well. So basically, what I'm saying is you can make this a lot lighter and faster rolling if you want it to as well. All right, let's see how far that steeper seat angle gets me up here. Come on. Come on, come on, yes. Not bad of the trail boss, in fast rolling. A 16 kilo bike, we'll take that. And obviously this ultimate spec, Super Deluxe gives you loads of adjustment in terms of low speed, so you can set it in sensitivity and firmness but it works really well it's not like as a sweet spot setting it just gives you lots of ride feel options then you want sort of poppy supportive bike or something a bit plusher but silver spec bikes come with the deluxe select plus which is basically the same damper but without the piggyback and without external adjusters so it's lighter but you're getting the same control less faffing with dials that also comes with a charger 2 pike fork up front so hunt wheels and slx with your brakes so that's a really smart spec bike and while you know their stock builds a really good value and that one just talked about has been chosen specifically because that was a build that a lot of people kind of went for on custom and also let you fully tweak your builds or even just go with a part build based on components you already have so you know they really work to get the right complete bike for their customers as well as offering like and as well as all the rock shocks options, you got Fox, you got Cane Creek, inline shocks, which always went really well in Cottage. So I've done a load of work with the guys from Cane Creek on the tunes for those. You got SRAM, Shimano drive chain options. There's a whole load of different ways you can build your jet. And because it's such a versatile bike in terms of geometry, in terms of the strength, handling, now it's great having all those options. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! Proper mountain bikers, mountain bike built by, you know, genuinely, oh, this is going to sound such a cliche, but built by not just real mountain bikers, but some of the nicest, most thoughtful genuinely customer focused and community focused guys in the whole industry now what they do on a small scale in terms of the business in terms of like funding little local bmx tracks trash free trails involvement trash mob cottage women of steel they're just everything you could want from super 
socially responsible, socially connected company. And I kind of feel bad. In terms of testing, I've not really talked about the geometry much or anything like this, because let's be honest, so spot on, there's nothing really to say. I mean, this C3 fits me perfectly now. That's really made a difference. It doesn't feel quite as rangy as the large. And because this bike is so tight now as well, especially in this kit rig, but that really lets you just concentrate on the core strength of this frame. That, that super well damped steel feel that's underlined so well by this lyric setup. It really is really focused and tight. Kind of got SB150 Yeti vibes. Yeah, proper race feeling bike in terms of how well it supports through corners and how well you can let it run even though this verdict tire on the front is definitely pushing on and sliding more than ideal so new jack 2 it really is such a sorted bike now just feels like just saying to Sai he's been saying oh, have you got any questions you want to ask I'm like not really because it's just it's just such a together machine now. It just does everything exactly when you want it, where you want it, in a really, really sorted way. Really, really impressed by it. And it's obviously, oh shit, this is Freddy's. Ah! Hey, I've not done that in ages. That just, this is not the trail I was expecting to come down. But I'm kind of really glad I did because it just shows how confident and capable this bike is. Now there's no riding around like flex in the steel tube set, which used to be a thing on the longer travel cut it bikes. It's just super solid and confident now, it's properly got your back in such a capable and consistent way. And you add up all those cottage advantages of the company and the ethos and the custom spec options. Oh, this is just a brilliant bike now. It really is. So there you go. I'm, I'm sorry, it's been a bit of a hit and miss one, this, to be honest. I mean, we've been stopping for photos, that's part of it. But also, every time I was kind of getting into my flow describing stuff, I'd just have a proper wow moment where this bike would kind of just prove why I love Kotick so much and why this is a real, kind of really is the epicenter of, like, it's a proper hardcore trail bike, is this. The stuff I've ridden today has been eluding me on things like, you know, Kinevo SLs, 170 mil of travel. I've been falling off on the trails I've been riding today recently. So to absolutely nail them with tons in reserve in terms of confidence on a steel bike really shows that Sai is properly on top of the art of making and such an evolved, it's just, it really is a centerpiece, not just in travel, but in kind of capability and just showing what you can do with this kind of bike, but still having the beautiful signature look to it. I'm gonna do a uh, very quick tech talk around on it, I think, just so we can get up close on the details and I'll, I'll tag that in at the end. But also just, yeah, just have a look at it. Just uniquely clean and yet now so uncompromised and so capable in the way it rides. Better than ever. And it was great already. So massive thanks to Sai for letting me ride this bike early. Uh, huge thanks to him for, uh, you know, always bearing Guy Kezin TV in mind when it comes to uh, pushing the new bikes. Uh, massive thanks to my Patreon subscribers, as always, who pledge on a monthly basis and they get exclusive early and behind the scenes edits as a thank you. And they get all of those ad free as well. So that's a real bonus if you pledge on a small monthly basis. 
uh, to patreon.com uh, on my page. But also thanks to my normal channel sponsors, that's Giro Cycling UK, Enduro Bearings, PT's Products, Talk Nutrition, Heb Troco, and Crud XL Fenders. But for now, I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kest TV, documenting the latest chapter of Kotick's unique and yet superbly charismatic journey through the mountain bike manufacturing landscape. You know, Jet 2 really is a bike that Cy can be proud of making and you should be really, really proud of owning just because it's different for all the right reasons. And yet, yeah, no, it's just, yeah, as long as you can suck up a few grams, it's just positives all the way, right from the company ethos to the character of the bike. Simple as that. Oh, my hand! <laughs> oh, this is so good! Whoa! Whoa! <laughs>